Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another vlog. Hi, how are you guys? I am starting off the week. It is Monday today. I am resetting for the week. Yesterday, Kim actually left. She was here over the weekend. We had so much fun. We did so many things. She got her hair done. We got to see Stephanie. We got to see Stephanie's dog Pepper. Um, after hair, we went to Fo with a Chow. I'm just kind of breezing through everything that we did. We had a lot of yummy, yummy food this past weekend. Today, we have a pretty hectic schedule. I'm not really active per se, but I have a lot to do like office work. I have to do my taxes and I'm already running late. So I have lots to do. I was supposed to wake up earlier today, but I did not. I'll get to talking about this in a little bit, but I just feel so renewed. I also should find something to eat. I've been weirdly craving Chipotle. Like what is wrong with me? I never used to crave Chipotle like this. I just ordered some lunch. I got some poke from Tiger Plate. It had good reviews. All I got, hold on, let me try to open this. I got brown rice with cucumbers. They had really different options where you can do like brown rice with white rice, brown rice with lettuce, white rice with lettuce, white rice with cucumber, brown rice with cucumber. It was actually really cool. And then you can choose what sauce you want your actual fish to be in. I got spicy miso. Honestly, as soon as I ordered it, I really wanted to show you, but that was my bad. It looks really good and it smells good. I am going to try to take a good bite for you guys to get my opinion. Mmm. Wow, that poke is good. Mmm. Wow, this is really good. Sorry, you guys. I don't know what's going on outside, but... There's either construction or... Mmm. This is good. Hello, update. I have not moved. I'm still at my desk. I'm still doing work. At one point, I would like to get out of the house to get some fresh air because I think I'm gonna go insane. I've been staring at the computer screen. Like, not really blinking. My eyes hurt so bad right now because they're so red. <laughs> Who are you barking at, babe? <laughs> Who are you barking at? Come here. Come. Come up. Where are you going? Where are you going? Hold on. I need some water. <clears throat> Were any of you guys kind of like disappointed in the start of your year? Because I feel like I was so motivated right before the new year. I was like, I'm going to get it. I'm going to freaking wrap this year around my pinky finger and it's going to, I'm going to make it my bitch. And the first quarter was literal shit. And I finally feel like this past month, my brain was finally like thawing. And I was like, okay, I feel better. And I'm wondering if it was seasonal depression, which I had never actually like, no, just kidding. I had heard of it. I had never experienced it, but I feel it. I felt it. It was, it was deep and dark and scary. Sorry for this little tangent. It's just, I have to get it out, but I am feeling so much better. I feel like I've had a breakthrough in, in my mental health almost. Some things I've been doing is really practicing. I don't need to over worry and over stress about something that is out of my control. And I struggle with that a lot because I love control. I don't know if it's just being the oldest child and just my mom's personality is also very similar. So it's probably genetically I got it from her. It's just, I like being under control because it makes me feel better. I don't know what it is. Second thing I've been doing, which has improved my mental health so much and something I knew was gonna help me was I started going back to the gym. I don't really mention the gym or my workout life anymore because if I'm being completely brutally honest with you guys, it's obviously because like in the most blunt way ever, years ago, I had lost a significant amount of weight. I was feeling sexy and hot and then a traumatic experience happened to me and then and I binge ate and fell into like this deep, dark depression and gained everything and more back. 
So obviously it's gonna be a little bit sensitive with me and I'm learning how to love my body as it is now. And I thank her every day, but is it my ideal life? No, like when I vision and fantasize about the lifestyle that I wanna live, like no, this isn't who she is. And so I have made a point to slowly work on that at my own pace. Me opening up about this is hopefully going to help me get back into the habit of sharing that side with you guys no matter how vulnerable and scary it is for me. One of the reasons why I started going back to the gym was not solely because I was like, I'm gonna lose weight and I'm gonna be hot this summer, even though that was a big part of it. Not really summer, more so the fact that my 30th is around the corner and my mom, this is a little toxic, but it's the Asian toxicity that I live with. My mother growing up reminded me Oh, like, do you really want to live fat your whole life? Your your 20s are your best times to live and you're wasting it being fat. Like, you know, like, how are you going to find a husband? Like, people don't like you. Like, and it sucks because, ugh, as fucked up as it is, it's partially true. I've lived a skinny life. I've lived a fat life. Fat life is not fun. I'm sorry. And as much as we want to fight for equality and I will fight till I die, for me, it's like, yeah, okay, fine. If I wasted my 20s, and my 20s sucked, you guys. My 20s sucked. Half of it was horrible, okay? I didn't get to enjoy it until probably my 28th birthday to now and then to my 30th. But I'm so excited for my 30th and I like refuse to ruin it for myself. So I am working on just a mini project. Hi, you guys. It is the next day. I actually just got back from dropping off Clementine. I woke up extremely late because I went to bed extremely late. I went to bed late because I was doing my mom's nails last night and it was very, very, very detail oriented. I'll show you guys later. But she got little white toesies and we did some French nails on her hands and they are my best French tips so far. They were cute. I did it for her one once before, but I didn't have all the tools that I needed, so I couldn't really make it like the best that I could. I wanna show you guys my mommy's nails. Aren't they cute? Cute little Frenchies. My mom and I made the strangest concoction. Um, the soup base is udon soup, like Japanese udon, and then the noodles are um, like pho noodles, and then <laughs> I put some dumpling wontons and then broke an egg in there. So it's kind of like a clear soup-ish vibe. I know it's gonna taste good because all the ingredients taste good. It's just, it, it looks random. Holy crap, there's also a lot going on in a very small pot. I'm salivating though. Try some of the noodles. Hmm. Hot, very, very hot. But so freaking good. Mmm. Mmm. Much getting it though. My mom made radish kimchi. Mmm, bachama. Mmm. Clemmy. Clem. Hi, you guys. It is the next day. It is actually Wednesday. My mom is flying to Korea, hence so why I did her nails and everything. I also got a major bad, bad, bad gel reaction to it even though I wore gloves and everything. So it's just a writing out process, but it is horrible. Anyways, my mom left this morning 
the whole family woke up. We all got to say goodbye. She was supposed to depart at 10.50. Last minute, they decided that they were going to delay the flight by nine hours. Obviously, it can be shorter, but maximum nine hours because they're fixing something on the plane. Just flying in general is so much anxiety. And so I've had a lot of anxiety with my mom going. I've tried to suppress it. I feel like I can't move my body. I can't think right. I can't. I feel like I'm having an anxiety attack without really having an anxiety attack. And my like emotions are through the roof and so I'm sitting here in bed and I haven't been able to make a decision I don't know what to do Kim is like come over we can hang out and I know she'll keep me kind of like preoccupied but then I also don't want to leave home because my anxiety says something's gonna go to shit and I should be home I don't know my anxiety is just taking over everything. So I just like need a moment alone, but I can't just get up and go to Kim's whenever either because there's going to be traffic and stuff like that. So just, (sighs) I left the house, you guys. I'm in the car. I'm going to Kim's because if I sit in my own thoughts, somehow, some way, I will find a way to break into LAX and go grab my mom, but I can't. So I have to distract myself. My brother is watching Clem for me and then I'm going to go hang out with Kim and that way I can also get more vlog footage because I actually have work to do. And if I'm not over there, I'm gonna sit at home and just sit in my anxiety. So that's what we're doing. I'm reunited. Hello. Not that I literally saw you this past weekend. And I see you again in 48 hours. I know. <laughs> We're going to Chipotle. For guacamole. For guacamole. $20 per hour. You looking for a job? I want to say this one, yeah. <laughs> Wait. Do I look crusty? No. You just I've been cleaning so the last four days. No. Never mind. We got a bowl. I got guacamole. You never get guacamole. No, I don't, I don't like, like it. Too it. mushy. Too mushy. We've moved on to home goods. Hey, did you enjoy your Chipotle? Yeah, it's coming out my ass. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> wow, the lighting here was stunning. We are at home Is goods. Texas? Oh, what? Oh, boot. I was shaped like Texas. <laughs> Is a boot? This ain't Texas. Oh, wow. I would absolutely not buy that. You would buy this. What? For a charcuterie? Yeah, for a charcuterie. Charcuterie. Right. Oh, we're turning right. We're turning right. right. Mom. Well, we have to turn right again. Turn right. Turn right again. Turn, turn, turn right. on the signal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch your head. Okay. Oh, we're skinny. Wow. <laughs> turn left. Turn left. Turn left. Turn left. Do our dogs need anything? No. Are you sure? No. No, you never know. Our dogs Cooper don't need Cooper called. Cooper called? <laughs> what did he say? He said get everything that's cute. Of course he did. Pigs. Oh my goodness. Look! What? Pigs in a barn. I mean when she's not groomed. Oh my god, but literally. <laughs> Wait, that's actually how she looks like. She just got brushed out yesterday. Why is she getting groomy? She just got a bath yesterday. Is this a, like a margarita thing? I think it is. Oh, that's cute. Oh, that's bark. Cooper won't fit. <laughs> Cooper won't fit. Oh man would love it though. Oh man would love Cooper won't fit in here. Yeah, he will. Barely. It's so nice. Oh, it's so cute. I would have gotten it. So cute though. I know. Oh man would love. He likes his privacy now that he's older. Hey, ma'am. Excuse me. You. Come here. Okay, this is what I mean by acting pissy when I come home from someone else's house when they have dogs. Huh. Oh, you're just going to act like you're tired? Hello from current day. I just wanted to say my mom finally made it to Korea. I didn't want to leave you guys hanging because my anxiety, but she did make it to Korea. We did hear from her sister and she was finally able to get Wi-Fi and message us. It took her 28 hours, but I hope she's having a fun, fun time. If you're listening, Oma, I hope you're having so much fun. Okay, we're safe here. We're so fine. We love you. Have fun. Don't stress. Arati, we're waiting for you. Love you. 
and welcome back to another tell me more segment hi you guys i absolutely just need to say thank you so much to the amazing feedback that you gave me on my last tell me more which technically was really the first one i was a little nervous because it was a little bit of a long one and it was a standalone tell me more and it just did so amazing. You guys absolutely loved it. And just all the comments. Oh my, it was, it was amazing. It was amazing to have Kim on Tell Me More. It was amazing to film it. It was amazing to see your guys' feedback. It was just it was everything to me, but I don't want to waste too much time. As always, I will put the email down below. I will also leave it right here if you guys want to catch it. It's just TMM for tell me more, period, M-Y-C, my initials at gmail.com, okay? TMM dot M-Y-C at gmail.com. Okay, let's dive right into it. My friendship with my best friend. She is married and has cheated on her husband on multiple occasions. One time she was honest and the second time, most current situation, she has been in a secret relationship with someone else for a year. The guy in the relationship knows she is married, but his family doesn't. My best friend has not seen an issue with her decision and I have come to a point where I have questioned her character and our friendship due to the differences in values and lack of empathy of others' feelings that are involved, such as her husband, new boyfriend, and his family. I have felt that in order to be a good friend, I have had to be in a place of accepting her behavior and choices to feel like a good friend. But I have shown concern for her and others' emotional and mental well-being. She has not been receptive to my feedback, and it's okay, but I feel like I want to let go of this friendship due to the difference in morals. Is this selfish? I have not communicated this verbally, but have distanced myself quite a lot. So that's the first question in this first email is this selfish no because if you're saying that the other person's actions are hurting people and you don't want to be a part of that that is not selfish you're protecting yourself you're allowed to do that second of all I think you've done everything you possibly can to be a great friend to her by saying hey have you thought about the other person's perspective hey do you realize this is not only hurting others, but it's also hurting us and our friendship and how this makes me feel about you? I would be concerned if my friend is out there deceiving people for fun and she sees no problem with it. Like I would be like, oh, we are not as similar as I thought we were or oh, wow, our morals don't match up at all all actually because I would never do this but I think a big concern for me is if I was in your shoes is that I would feel like wow if you can do this to someone that is as close as you would be to a best friend what could you do to me you know what I mean I feel like I would have trust issues with her regarding that I feel like she could fuck me over and I don't like that I don't like non-trustworthy people I think if I'm reading the message as is not trying to overthink it or over explain it you have done everything for your friendship and there's nothing else you can do and if you're saying hey this is not this friendship is not serving me in a positive way anymore it's time to move on and that's okay and she is saying that that's okay by doing what she's doing, even knowing that it's not okay with others. Okay, we are gonna cover the second email. Good thing I did not add any more than that. My parents just got divorced and it has been a struggle for me as I have been healing from it over the past year. However, recently, oh, 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 both my parents just got new significant others with kids. They have called the kids our step siblings and I was not ready for younger brothers and sisters. What is your advice with this? Should I consider the kids my siblings or tell my parents that I am not responsible for them? Secondly, I have been avoiding many family parties as it's hard to choose which side to go to, especially for holidays, such as my mom and dad have parties the same day. Is that okay or shall I feel bad about that. Lastly, should I be upset that they have new significant others because I'm not comfortable with the new change or is it reasonable for me to be upset? I appreciate you reading this and hope to have this in a segment. Thank you. Okay, so I this with this email specifically, I really need your guys's help. 
those of you who have been a child of divorce and who has gone through something very similar because I'm not exactly in her shoes. I don't know what it feels like to be a part of a family with divorced parents and just being in that situation and having stepbrothers and stepsisters. I know it's very common and I know sometimes it's very easy for families to mesh, but for those of you who are experiencing it or have had to deal with this and maybe work through it or didn't end up working through it, please let me know your advice is down below. Of course, always with comments, please, please, please be nice because we don't like mean people. Thank you. And you will get blocked no matter what. But if I could try to give advice as a friend and try to put myself in your shoes, I am going to think of it in a way if my parents got divorced, which they almost did when I was in high school. So I do know that heartbreaking feeling. Like I do know like that part. I just don't know the part about like having siblings. Did you say you were 25? I think you said you were 25, huh? I'm 25. Okay, 25, but the kids are younger. It kind of depends on your family's rules and what they expect of you because personally, I would be cordial with the children because it's like, okay, clearly you're stuck in it as much as I am. Clearly it sucks for you as much as it sucks for me. Unless they're really young, then I don't even know where to begin with that. I would feel so weird. But in my head, I'm like, I don't need to be around the parties if I'm uncomfortable. I don't need to hang out with the kids outside of like when I have to because my parents ask me to because I'm an adult and I get to do whatever I want to do. Also, your parents... Personally, I think it's your parents' job to be able to bring the kids together and help them get along and, you know, encourage that in a healthy way. Now, I don't know. I don't even know how my parents would deal with it because I'm thinking of it in an Asian household perspective. But my parents wouldn't do that. They would just put us together and be like, okay, well, figure it out. Be friends. So if you're in that situation... That's even worse for me because I would just be like, nope, I'm out. Like, I'm not even going to try because this is absolutely useless. I, the first thing I would do is 1000% talk to my mom and talk to my dad and be like, hey, okay, um, I see that you guys have moved on and that's great. It's great that you guys have moved on and I'm so happy for you and I'm so happy to see you happy, but this is all still very new and very hurtful to me and I'm still getting through that and I need you to understand that it's going to be a long process to get used to this new family dynamic because I feel like if you explain it to them and you're like, open, like 100% open, what are they going to do? Ridicule you for being open and honest about your feelings? Because at that point, if they're like, okay, we'll suck it up. I would honestly be like, well, no, suck this. Goodbye. I'm leaving. Like that was rude. I told you my feelings and you're just going to completely ignore them and act like they don't mean anything. Because then you have the right to be like, Okay, we're, we're done until you know how to respect my boundaries. That's how I would handle it. Thank you to everyone who emailed me. I'm still getting emails. Remember, the email is down below. Thank you guys so much for joining me on a Friday TMM. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Make sure to like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.